Today, I'll be showing you how you can work with the YouTube Data API. So in this video, we are going to create a website uh, from a yeah, template that I'm going to find online. And we are going to work with JavaScript uh, with this YouTube Data API to be able to see links and title of your most recently uploaded videos in your YouTube channel. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your YouTube channel. You could bring this information for any YouTube channel that is out there. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to console.developers.google.com and then you want to create a new project. Here you can see uh, that I have this option to create a new project. If you don't see that, you should be able to click into the select a project dropdown and be able to select new project from here as well. And I'm going to name this YouTube API v3 and then select the option to create. Once it's created, you want to go to uh, the credentials option and then create an API key. So select the create credentials API key. It's going to create an API key that you're going to be using for your HTTPS request with the YouTube data API. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. You are welcome to copy it, but you do have the option to show key if you miss uh, copying it and then hit close. And we are not done yet. We need to go to library and enable YouTube API and select the YouTube data API v3 and select the option to enable. If you don't do this step, you're not going to be able to use your API key and get the results that you need. All right. Awesome. So that is enabled. So perfect. You want to go back to credentials again, just so you have that API key visible. And then let's go back to our first tab. So this is the website where you can go and look at the references of the YouTube Data API. On the left side, you will have a list of YouTube API that is available that you can work with. For our purposes, we are going to go and retract our most recently uploaded playlist ID. And to do that, you want to go to channels and then list. And then you want to select content details as the part option. So this is the only required parameter, but you should also include your channel ID here, which I will show you how to retrieve that. So first thing you want to go ahead and choose content details, copy that and paste it into part. And then now let's go ahead and find our channel ID. So to do that, you want to go to youtube.com and you want to go to your uh, YouTube profile icon here and then go to setting, then go to advanced settings and you should be able to see the channel ID here. You just select copy, go back to the first tab, paste that into the ID section, scroll down and disable this Google OAuth 2.0 and execute. And once you execute, you want to scroll down and find your uploads ID. So this is that ID, you want to copy that. So control C to copy. And then you want to go to playlist items and go to list. And this is where we are going to feed the ID that we copied. So we are able to retract all our recently uploaded videos. So I'm going to go ahead and paste my ID that I copied. And for the max results, you want to go ahead and type in 50. So what that means is you're going to get the first 50 videos that you recently uploaded. And then for the part, which is our required parameter, we are going to feed in snippet and scroll down. Let's go ahead and uncheck that and go ahead and execute. Let's do execute one more time. Let's see what, oh, I'm sorry. It's not the ID where you want to do it. You want to put that in the playlist ID, not in the ID. You want to paste that in your playlist ID and you should be able to execute now. And here you go. You have 50 of your most recently uploaded videos. I can scroll all the way down and I'm able to see results per page. Now we need to create our HTTPS get URL. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and select the show code option and select the HTTP tab. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this entire link and paste that into a test editor. So you can choose um, to use, you know, Notepad plus plus or whatever you want to use. You want to go ahead and replace this API key with the key that you created in console.developers.google.com. So I'm going to go back to my second tab, show key, and then copy that and go back to my text edit and paste that in. And now we're going to go ahead and create a website. So to do this, we're just going to go to W3 schools, HTML, CSS templates and scroll down and look for CSS website layout and scroll all the way down until you get the option to try it yourself and copy this entire HTML CSS code. So again, if you're creating your own website, you know, uh, you can have your own set of CSS and HTML just for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm going to make it very simple and just copy and paste over from this website. So copy and I'm going to open Visual Studio Code to do my editing of this HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and select the plus button to create a new file. 
name this youtube.html and paste what I copied over. And here you have three columns. For our purpose, we just need one column. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two columns. And so we just have one column. I'm gonna delete this. Actually, I'm gonna keep the H2 and delete what you have in the, in the paragraph thing. And I'm just gonna make this latest videos. And I'm gonna go all the way to the top and update my column width to make this 100%. I'm gonna right click on this and open this with the live server. So you may not have this option. Um, I have a YouTube video that I did recently where I showed how to configure this. So I will put that in the description below. So I'm gonna go ahead and open with the live server and you should be able to see the website that we copied over. So here's the latest video that we made changes to. And now we are gonna go back into that column again. And here is where we are going to write our JavaScript to parse through the YouTube API response to show the relevant information in our website. So we're gonna go ahead and type in script and type fetch and copy the URL that we created and paste that in here in between those two quotes. Hit enter, then do dot, then res as in response. And then we are going to do the curly bracket and type in return, oops, return res.json because the YouTube resp you know, response that we have is in JSON format. Um, then I'm going to do data, data.items.for each, or as in current node, and then special bracket again. And here I'm gonna go ahead and type in console.log her, just to see what we have in that node. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this page. Go to three buttons here to go into the developer tools. So in Google Chrome, if you go to developer tools, you're able to see the JavaScript code uh, that's running in your console. Um, we still haven't um, you know, parsed through the API to show in the HTML yet. We are going to do that in some time. So you're gonna to go to more tools and in more tools, let me actually move this over so you're able to see it. In more tools, you wanna to go to developer tools and I'm gonna move this all back and you can see object, object, object. So let's actually look into the object that we have. This is the YouTube, you know, API response. We have a snippet in there and in the snippet, we have the, the resource ID Okay, so we have the video ID that we can see here and we also have the title, so perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the title and then create a, a, a href. So when you click the title, it just opens in a new tab to play the video that I created, my recently uploaded. To do that, we need to go into car.snippet.title. So let's go ahead and do that, car.snippet.title. Let's see what we get. Oh, oops. I had to put the snippet and that title inside the parentheses, which is why I was failing. There we go. So there we go. We are able to see the title, the first 50. And now I'm going to save that as vid title, vid title equal to car snippet title. And here I'm just going to go back to the car again to look at where my YouTube uh, video ID is. So I'm going to click on one of these arrays. It really doesn't matter about which one and then go to snippet so it's in snippet resource id and then video id okay let's console that in so snippet oops r dot resource id dot video id and there we go so these are the video id so these are the unique video ids that you have so we need to actually build out the the YouTube uh, URL video id so you're able to click it and go to that video and go one to one of these videos Pause that video and I'm going to capture all the way up until V equal to and copy that over. So vid URL equal to all the way up until V that we copied from the address bar. And then we're gonna do plus the vid ID and close that out. And in the console now, I'm going to go ahead and type in vid URL. I gotta make sure it's case sensitive, so obviously you have to write exactly how you're seeing it. So here you go. You're able to see that link that we created. So if I click it, one of the links, it's able to go to the video that we wanted to. Perfect. So now what we need to do is show this information in the front end in the way that I described it earlier, which is title and then the link attached to it. So the way you would do this is we are going to create a markup. So markup equal to a href you want to make sure you do this 
uh, code. It, it looks like a single code, but it's really not. Uh, it's by your tilde sign, so I don't really know the right terminology or the right word for it, but I will put that in the in this video. So in the markup, you wanna go ahead and type in A H R E F. So we're building the link, and then we are going to do dollar sign vid special bracket vid URL and close that then do target equal to underscore blank and then close that again so the reason why we did target equal to blank is when a person in your website is clicking on your link you want to make sure that person uh, is just opening that link in a new tab instead of going directly into the uh, you know video so you want to go ahead and now do vid title so dollar sign again vid Oops, vid title and you want to close your a reference and do a p just so you're able to um oh by the way you have to close that video title like this and you you do a p just so you can create some spacing in between so now let's kind of make sure everything looks right in the markup so let's go ahead and refresh our page okay so that looks good to me perfect so now what we're going to do is we're going to add this markup into the front end. So you can do that by document.querySelector, open parentheses and do vid. So I'm using this reference um, in my code. So we need to make sure we do that reference or we create the tag for that. So I'm going to do vid right here. So the result of this query is going to be in between these two tags. And then I'm going to do insert uh, just an HTML open parenthesis and do before end comma markup. So it sort of continuously add it all up, close that off and here you go. You can see the first 50 links show up here and if you click it, it should open in a new tab. You can kind of do a lot of cool stuff with it. Uh, you know, let me just kind of show the response of, of car in our YouTube API here. So if you want, you can go and find the thumbnail with the right you know resolution size so you can feed it all into a table as an example something like this where you can kind of create a table like i mentioned put the thumbnail and you know make it look pretty this is your project make it as customizable as you need and if you found this video helpful make sure you do some donation uh, you can do that by going into my website shinu.ga and hit the donate button or you can do buy me a coffee slash shinu and you should be able to buy me a coffee. I'll put those links in the description below if this helped you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. For now, bye.